We'll bring the land use hearing to order. County Manager Todd Leopold. Yes, uh, one land use hearing uh, for your consideration. It's RCU 2015-4, Denver Mart uh, Five Day Mile Festival, and it's Emily Collins with our planning department is going to be the case manager on this. Five day. Five day. Uh, I asked that question. I I, I said Cinco. I. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. That's our trilingual program we're working. Good morning, Commissioner. So, as previously stated, this is Denver Mart 5 de Mayo, or in other words, Cinco de Mayo Festival. <laughs> Either one. So, the applicant is requesting a conditional use permit to hold a two day outdoor festival on the pavilion parking lot on Denver Mart grounds in the I-2 Industrial Zone District. So the site is approximately 27.8 acres and is bounded by I-25 to the west, Washington Street to the east, and East 58th Avenue to the south. So here we can see the site is outlined in the light blue color, so it is multiple lots. The portion of the site to be used for the cultural festival is zoned I-2 Industrial, so it is this northern uh, portion of the property. Nearby parcels are zoned I-1, I-2, and I-3 industrial, and C-5 commercial. The Denver Mart proposes to host an outdoor cultural festival in celebration of Cinco de Mayo on May 2nd and 3rd, 2015. The event will take place on the Denver Mart's pavilion parking lot. The event is a two-day family event featuring vendor ex exhibitions, food and drink, live music, and children play areas. Approximately 20,000 people are expected over the course of the two-day event. So here is the uh, parking lot site plan which has a layout of the vendor areas, um, and this is the northernmost parking lot of the site. So the majority of traffic will exit off of I-25 at 58th Avenue and head east to the multiple Denver Mart parking lots. There will be flaggers and signage to direct people into the various lots. Traffic flow around the event space will be directed from west to east in a one-way direction. The entrance will be on Logan Street and the exit will be on Washington Street. The Denver Mart plans to rent 2,200 parking spaces in the general area and have shuttles running back and forth from the marts to the lots. So the Denver Mart provides a third party company to provide security in the parking lots and perimeter of the Denver Mart property. Security will be on duty for 24 hours each day through the duration of the event. During the event, security would be located at all entrances and exits, ticketing stations, all alcohol areas, the stages and entertainment areas, stations set up along, and stations set up along the perimeter of the property and outside entrances. The event management company will contract for at least 80 or more portable toilets. The Denver Mart Property Maintenance Department will maintain the grounds of the parking lot and the surrounding area with a cleanup crew dedicated to trash removal throughout the day and after the closing of each show day. Trash receptacles will be placed throughout the parking area, event space, and remote lots and the event space will be cleaned and cleared each night after the show. So the Denver Mart convened a neighborhood meeting on January 7th, 2015 to share information about the proposed event. One person attended who expressed concerns with trash pickup, parking, and security. The applicant stated they provided the meeting attendee information regarding his concerns and he seemed satisfied. They received one email from an individual who did not have concerns. So transportation department comments, there are no drainage concerns with this project. Traffic control plans will be required for the following access points, uh, 58th Avenue and Logan Court, 58th Avenue and Washington Street, and the access north from Washington Street, uh, north of 58th Avenue. And the applicant is prepared to speak to the previous events held on the Denver Mart site and any lessons learned or improvements for their traffic control plan. Additionally, the Transportation Department is requiring that street sweepers are contracted to clean Logan Street, 58th Avenue and Washington Street after the event. Trash cans and recycle bins shall be installed along the right-of-way adjacent to the site. The applicant shall have tow trucks contracted and prepared to move vehicles that are legally parked in no parking zones. For citizen comments, Margot Schultz, on behalf of the adjacent property owners, requested that the Denver Mart address the security measures to be taken during the event, liability insurance coverage, post-event cleanup, and ongoing drainage issues on site. The Denver Mart responded that the Adams County Sheriff will be contracted to provide traffic control and to keep the peace in the surrounding area. The event security will be provided by SASS Security Services, which will deploy 50 security guards. Waste management services will handle on-site waste collection and recycling. And Denver Mart staff will be maintaining the area inside and outside of the parking lot for the festival. 
CDOT states that any placement of traffic control on I-25 or State Highway 53 will require a special use permit from their office. And the applicant states it has met with CDOT to discuss this matter and will apply for the special use permit for the Cinco de Mayo Festival. Excel Energy states they own and operate existing underground electric distribution facilities throughout the area and they advise the utility notification center should be notified to have all utilities located prior to any site preparation, i.e. tent staking. And the applicant states it has contacted Excel to discuss this matter and will not allow staking in the parking lot. The Tri-County Health Department states the proposed portalettes should be adequate. Solid waste trash receptacles should have lids and be placed in readily accessible areas. Wastewater should not be disposed into storm drains. Food service trucks must have a valid retail food establishment license from CDPHE and shade should be utilized to limit exposure to sun. The applicant states it is contracted with Liberty Services for portalette service and with Renser Entertainment for waste management. All food truck vendors will be required to use their own wastewater receptacles. Denver Mark Catering will use its standard wastewater procedures. All food service providers will be appropriately licensed and ample tents in the pavilion parking lot will provide shade for event attendees. So here we have some views looking north along Logan Street into the site. So we can see I-25 to the west. Here we're looking east into the site from Logan. Looking west towards I-25. Looking south along Logan Street. So is looking west across the site towards I-25. So this would be the parking area where the event is held. Looking north across the site, it's looking east, and looking south across the site toward the pavilion building. And here we are looking east across the site, so Washington would be um, furthest from us here. Here we're looking north along Washington, looking east, and looking south along Washington. So the conditional use is compatible with the surrounding area, harmonious with the character of the neighborhood and neither detrimental to the immediate area nor to the health, safety or welfare of the inhabitants of the area and the county. So this case was heard on April 9th, 2015 by the Planning Commission which recommended um, approval in a <laughs> unanimous decision. No public testimony was presented at the hearing and the Planning Commission asked the applicant to elaborate on potential changes to safety and security procedures in the event that improvements need to be made based on how the Cannabis Cup event proceeds. They also wanted to know how much attendees would be charged to attend the event. The Planning Commission and staff recommend approval of the request with eight findings of fact, two conditions precedent, 14 conditions, and three notes, and that concludes the staff presentation. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have questions for staff? Commissioner? <clears throat> I guess my question is, when you showed the pictures of the parking lot, Obviously, it's in need of um, some work. When you do these uh, rent, I assume we get rent for this. Yes. Do you, do you factor in possible future <clears throat> things that need to take place so you're covering that kind of thing? Or how do you <clears throat> address that? Commissioner Pulaski, could, could I ask if you have questions for staff? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> if this is a question for the applicant, we'll no, have the applicant it step forward. Sorry. Thank you. No questions for staff? No. Okay. At this time, would the applicant like to step forward and make any statements? Please state your name and address for the record. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, my name is Ken Williams. I'm with the Denver Mart, uh, Director of Event Sales and Operations. Uh, address is 451 East 58th Avenue uh, in Denver, 80216. And uh, so I guess I would start by saying to please remember first and foremost that the Cinco de Mayo uh, Festival and the Cannabis Cup are two separate events, two separate uh, sets of logistics and requirements and so forth. So um, uh, Cinco de Mayo, this, this particular event is uh, family focused. Um, uh, Entravision Media is a, pr a producing partner in the event so they've been promoting it as a family event advertising it as a, as a family event. Um, the logistics of the event are set up such that it is a family event with play areas for the kids, um, live music, food and beverage, etc. So uh, very much a family oriented uh, event versus what the Cannabis Cup uh, was. 
Um, let's see, we've worked with this show promoter uh, on many events in the past. Uh, in November last year, we had a uh, health fair that we worked with, Intravision and Renser Productions. It was a health fair for the Hispanic community. Uh, it was free of charge, so um, we had about 8,000, 9,000 attendees that came in and were screened uh, for health services free. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good relationship we have with Intravision and with Renser to produce these kinds of events. Um, Let's see, um, a couple things that have changed. This is actually going to be a one-day event as opposed to a two-day event. Um, interest has um, been a little bit, uh, I, I shouldn't say less, it just hasn't been as much as they thought it would be, so they've cut it to a one-day event. Um, and we expect the attendance is going to be closer to the twelve to 15,000 people as opposed to 20,000 as, as originally discussed. Um, Let's see, parking uh, for the event, I know that's uh, a question. Uh, we have rented parking lots, remote parking lots uh, from the property. Um, don't show any in the, in the uh, images on the presentation, but uh, 58th and Franklin, uh, just about a half mile east of the Mart, um, we have rented a parking lot. Uh, and then there's another parking lot on 54th Avenue between Washington and Franklin. Um, between the two of them, it's about 2,000 to 2,200 spaces in addition to the 1,800 that we'll have on our property. So we should have sufficient parking. Um, <coughs> signage, um, we'll use and uh, deploy the same or similar type signage that we did for the Cannabis Cup. Um, we'll have signage getting off the highway, directing people to the right uh, locations for parking. We'll have signage along 58th Avenue, directing people to those remote parking lots. Um, so. Uh, we feel like we have adequate signage. It, it uh, worked out pretty well for the Cannabis Cup. We found some areas where we need to increase those signage, uh, the signage, but for this particular event, we feel comfortable with the signage uh, that we have. Um, we have, uh, I'm working with uh, State Patrol right now to get the special event permit. Um, I submitted the application about four weeks ago, uh, so I expect that'll be here any day this week. Um, Captain Prater and I have emailed back and forth, and, and he is looking at it. So. Um, the traffic control plan, uh, it, it, it's not the same as what we use for the Cannabis Cup because it is a much smaller uh, crowd. Um, this event really, uh, we had uh, two events over this past weekend and we had about 12,000 attendees combined between the two events. So transport or, uh, traffic control in and out of the mart, we're uh, handle on any given weekend 15,000 attendees and don't have uh, traffic control issues. This event's gonna be on a Sunday only, so the uh, local area won't have a lot of traffic, typically doesn't have a lot of traffic on a Sunday, so we don't uh, anticipate too many traffic uh, control issues. That said, we do have a plan and it has been submitted to the State Patrol uh, for them to consider when they uh, issue the, the uh, special event uh, permit. Um, let's see. Um, we have a debrief, uh, and I'll just throw this in there, we have a debrief meeting uh, next week with the uh, <coughs> Sheriff's Department, the State Patrol, EMTs, uh, the security uh, companies, the fire department, et cetera, for the Cannabis Cup. Um, so while that doesn't necessarily if impact this particular event, I just want to make it uh, known that we are working with all of those agencies very closely on all of the outdoor festivals that we have, and we uh, will do the same uh, on this particular event as well. Um, Let's see, uh, I guess um, really that's the bulk of what I um, uh, wanted to throw out there today, so I'll end with that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Pulowski. So my question, uh, my concern is <clears throat> when you have so many different varieties of people who attend these events, and, and some of those places like people with neuropathy might have issues with even walking on that parking lot. So do you have plans to address those issues? We do, and in fact, the, the parking lot where this event's taking place is the same parking lot that we're um, putting the drive-in movie theater on. So okay. we're going through improvements on that parking lot um, uh, as we speak. So okay. that is definitely one of the um, concerns that we have okay. in all of our parking on all of our property. So we are addressing it, yes. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions for the applicant? Seeing no other questions, thank you very much. Absolutely, thank you. At this time, is there anyone in the audience who would like to make a statement or a comment on this application? Seeing none, commissioners, do we have a motion? 
I have a question for staff. Did you guys get all the questions answered that you guys were asking? It appeared that there were some bullet points that you were asking. Questions about lessons learned? Yes, they've been uh, satisfied and we will meet with the applicant for any future events and to also have a debrief about the previous events on the site. Um, but we do need to amend condition number two, uh, which has the hours of operation for the event as we're just hearing that it will be a one day event. Um, so to clarify, it's only occurring on the third or the fourth? The third on Sunday. Okay. So then we will remove, um, when are you going to be doing your setup and take down then? Because we have several days in here to account for the setup. The setup will take place on Saturday the 2nd, and the event will be on Sunday the 3rd, with the move out on Sunday night, and will be clear by Monday at noon. So then we would just amend condition number two um, to remove 430 and 51. Could you, could you please step up to the microphone so we can? So then removing the dates of 4-30-2015 and 5-1 for the move-in and setup, and we would just have uh, May 2nd as the setup from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. The event on the 3rd, and then the 4th would still be the take down and move out. That's correct, yes. So just an amendment to condition number two. Okay. Commissioners? Do we have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve RCU 2015-0004 Denver Mart Cinco de Mayo Festival uh, with the uh, conditions modified uh, as stated on the record by staff. Second. Commissioner Odorizio? Yes. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Henry? Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Approved. We are adjourned.